Influential Democrats from opposite ends of the party are throwing their weight behind candidates in next month's congressional special election in Ohio. Former State Senator Nina Turner and Cuyahoga County Democratic Chair Chantel Brown are competing for the seat left vacant by Housing and Urban Development Secretary Marsha Fudge. The Democratic candidates are set to face off in the August 3rd primary, less than two weeks away. Plus, there is a crowded field of candidates vying for Ohio Senator Rob Portman's seat. The Republican is retiring instead of seeking a third term. For more, I want to bring in Karen Kassler. She is the State House Bureau Chief for Ohio Public Radio and TV. Hi there, Karen. Welcome. Thanks very much for joining us. So how close is the race between Nina Turner and Chantel Brown? Well, there are 13 candidates in this race. And again, this is a race that is to replace Marsha Fudge, who left to become the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. It's a big deal, especially since the two leading candidates, as you mentioned, Chantel Brown and Nina Turner, are both black women, replacing a black woman who was a member of Congress. This is certainly the district that the Democratic candidate is going to win. I mean, this is a district that was drawn to be a Democratic district, and Marsha Fudge has gotten a bigger margin of victory than any other congressional candidate in terms of sheer numbers over the last couple of years, percentage-wise. So this is certainly either Chantel Brown or Nina Turner's race to win. So Nina Turner's national profile rose, of course, as a surrogate for Senator Bernie Sanders' presidential bid. Sanders is now campaigning for her. Chantel Brown has the backing of the Congressional Black Caucus. What are the big differences between these Democratic candidates? Well, right there, you can hear the differences because Chantel Brown has the party establishment behind her. Hillary Clinton endorsed her, the Congressional Black Caucus, as you said. A lot of party leadership endorsing her, Democratic Party leadership, whereas Nina Turner is has been endorsed and, and been campaigned for by the more progressive wing of the party, Bernie Sanders, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, that wing of the party. And this really sets up what is potentially a battle in the next Congress. Congress, if indeed Democrats do prevail, then Nancy Pelosi has said that she would vacate her speakership. And so who would actually take over that position? And I think Democrats are looking at this as the possibility of kind of a preview of what might happen. They both both sides want to get their people in place for a potential leadership vote once Nancy Pelosi is leaving that position and it opens up to a new speaker. Yeah, I mean, I just want to dig in on that point a little bit more. I mean, how does this race mirror what we are seeing for the Democratic Party nationally? Well, again, it's a lot of the back and forth between the establishment represented by Chantal Brown and the money that she's been raising versus Nina Turner. Nina Turner is a longtime activist here in Ohio. She was a former state senator. She's been very active, not only with Bernie Sanders' campaign, but even in previous years. But what's happening here, too, is the negative campaigning that's going back and forth. 13 candidates in this race, but all the focus has been on these two women. And there's been negative campaigning back and forth from national people involved in both campaigns. You had even in the last couple of days, uh, Cleveland cur clergy coming out and saying that Nina Turner needed to stop her ads against Chantel Brown. And uh, Nina Turner has been saying that Chantel Brown has been running ads and sending flyers that are negative towards her. So a lot of this has been a real push and pull and is starting to really heat up. It it's certainly a very, very closely watched congressional race uh, in Ohio, one of 16. Yeah, I, I imagine it just must be so highly charged, um, uh, mirroring this national sort of a push here between that establishment wing and, as you say, sort of the more progressive elements of the Democratic Party. Well, let's turn to the Senate side and the contest to fill retiring Republican Rob Portman's seat. Remind viewers how J.D. Vance rose to prominence and what the reaction to his declared candidacy has been. Well, J.D. Vance is one of 10 announced candidates in the U.S. Senate race, the most recent entrant in that. And uh, he is the venture capitalist who wrote Hillbilly Elegy, the book that became a movie a couple of years ago. And uh, he is one of five really high-profile candidates in this race on the Republican side. You have uh, 
former state treasurer Josh Mandel, former Ohio Republican Party chair Jane Timken, Bernie Moreno and Mike Gibbons. They are both Cleveland businessmen and J.D. Vance. The last three that I mentioned, Moreno, Gibbons and Vance, are wealthy individuals. It really speaks to how much money is potentially going to be in this race. And uh, this has already been very hotly contested and becoming extremely, extremely Trumpy. All of these candidates, one thing they have in common is that they are very vocal in their allegiance to former President Trump and his policies. Hmm. Well, who are the other potential contenders vying to replace Senator Portman? Well, again, former state treasurer Josh Mandel and Jane Timken, the former head of the uh, Ohio Republican Party, both of them talk about, Josh Mandel talks about being the first public official in Ohio to come out for Trump. Uh, Jane Timken will talk about she was handpicked by Trump to be the head of the Ohio Republican Party after 2016. And then you have Bernie Moreno, who was a car dealership owner who made a lot of money in that. Mike Gibbons, who has made a lot of money in his area, as well as J.D. Vance. So these folks are all kind of bond for that position. And J.D. Vance has really gotten a lot of attention lately because he's potentially the best known of this group. And he spent a lot of time backpedaling and taking back some of the things that he said about former President Trump in 2016. He really hotly disagreed with Trump on a lot of issues, including immigration. And uh, before he announced his candidacy, he went through his Twitter feed, erased a lot of tweets since then. Of course, those tweets were captured. He has been defending those tweets and saying, I, I didn't know then. I, I feel differently now. And so it's really a contest to see who can out Trump the other in a way. Yeah. And on the Democratic side, we should mention uh, Representative Tim Ryan as well, right? Right. And when I mentioned earlier that Ohio has 16 congressional seats, we're actually losing one. We'll have 15 congressional seats shortly. And Tim Ryan is a Democratic congressman, one of four Democratic congressmen from Ohio. And uh, there's a lot of talk about could he be the one whose seat is redrawn when Ohio's congressional map is redrawn. When you look at Ohio's map, this state has gone for the Republicans really dominantly since 2010, and certainly in the last two presidential cycles, Republicans won, Donald Trump won by eight points in 2016, by eight points in 2020. So it looked like the Republican candidate for U.S. Senate would be the winner. But Tim Ryan is certainly showing his medal here. Uh, he outraised all the Republican candidates in the last fundraising cycle, and uh, he's been really talking up his working class roots, really mimicking a lot of what Democratic U.S. Senator Sherrod Brown did when he was reelected in 2018. Even in the state that's dominated by Republicans, Sherrod Brown won in 2018. Right. Well, given these fundraising numbers, clearly this is shaping up to be a very intense fight. Karen Kassler for us. Karen, good to have you. Thank you very much. Great to talk to you, Elaine.